Hi everyone, this is Phil from Gaming, and today I'm going to show you my guide to the King of Swing mission in Ark Genesis. The King of Swing Grand Prix is a racing mission that is available in Ark Genesis. You find it in the bog biome, and to find it where it is particularly, you just click on the mission list in your inventory, and you can see right there King of Swing, which is available in Gamma, Beta, and Alpha difficulties. In order to find the hub for the mission, just simply click on Track Mission in the top right corner of the screen. The King of Swing mission will have you riding a Bloodstalker through a series of elevated gates through the trees, and you'll be swinging using the Bloodstalker's unique web swinging mechanic, which entirely isn't Spider-Man related. If you don't have a Bloodstalker, don't worry, you will be supplied one in this mission. That's important to note because the stats of any Bloodstalker you bring will have nothing to do with how this race goes. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to show you a successful run at Gamma Difficulty, Beta Difficulty, and Alpha Difficulty, so that gives me enough time to tell you some of the tricks I use to be successful at these runs. To start with, what you'll notice at Gamma Difficulty is you have 3 minutes and 20 seconds in order to complete 19 gates throughout these trees. And honestly, that is an exceedingly large amount of time. You can screw up over and over again, and you will be able to be successful. So let's talk about some of the moves that you have to do to move quickly with the Bloodstalker. For this run, you're going to be principally using two different moves. First, you're going to be using the alternate attack swing, which uses two webs, as opposed to the primary attack swing, which just uses one web. It moves much more in a straight line, as opposed to the arcing swing you get from the primary attack. And secondly, you're going to be interrupting those swings constantly by pressing spacebar on PC, which is the jump key, because you're going to be shooting forward, and it moves you much faster than you will move if you were to just use the swing. In this section, I swapped over to the primary attack versus the secondary attack, and the single web was just very inconsistent. I found myself just going all over the place, so I would highly recommend sticking to just the alternate attack for much more consistent movement. The next part of this map is the hardest part of the map, and that is gates 13 and 14. And that is because gates 13 and 14 require you to climb a great distance, and it is remarkably tricky to consistently gain altitude with the Bloodstalker. So uh, what you're going to have to learn to do is you're going to need to learn exactly the path to follow for this particular section. Elevation isn't the only issue. Branches, as you can see right here, will immediately stop you if you touch them in any way. And also the ground will stop you if you touch it in any way. So an alpha run requires you to be, as far as I can tell, nearly perfect. You'll need to make sure to not touch any branches. You can't touch any ground. You have to keep moving at all times. But after the 18th gate, you'll see there's the little finish line there, and that is Gamma Difficulty done. And uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was a terrible, terrible run. But I had a, more than a minute to spare. Now we move on to the beta run. The beta run takes a whole lot less time, but it is much less likely that you'll be successful, especially going... Uh, into this, but honestly the beta run is where you really will cut your teeth on this. You'll knock out the gamma almost instantly, but the beta run you're going to probably be doing a few times before you're successful. So let's talk about a few things that I do to make the beta run successful. First off, I stay in first person view. And the reason I stay in first person view is because when I press spacebar during the jumps, uh, I'm able to aim where I want to go with uh, with those jumps. So a heck of a lot better in first person than I can in third. So here you can see all I'm doing is my alt attack and then spacebar, really fast succession. So through the first few gates, fairly straightforward, though there are many times when you're gonna catch a branch and again, during the alpha run, that's gonna kill you. Here at gate six, there's a sharp turn and gate seven is a sharp turn. Now, right after gate seven is a long leap and you've gotta reach for that branch in order to catch it to gate eight. Through gates nine, it's pretty straightforward, but again, there's a long reach to get you to gate 10. Now, in this next section here, we have a lot of trees and the foliage can really get in your way. So it's a very good idea to stay in the center of the lane away from the branches and uh, things that will obscure your vision. Once we get to gate 12, that's when the ascent starts to occur. And again, you're going to hold the alt attack a little bit longer and let it pull you up before you jump through those gates. Then a fast turn into gate 14 and then quickly down. And at this point now, 
At this point, if you've been playing for long enough, you're already going to be shaking a little bit because there are many times when you won't even get this far at beta and especially not at alpha. But at this point, all you have to do is just be consistent, try to stay pretty much in the center, commit cut corners when you can, and then you'll get all the way to victory. At this point, once you've finished beta, you're going to want to try to get to alpha, though there's a few things I would do first. First, I'd continue to run beta a few times until I was down to about a time of like 87 or 86 seconds, because you need 85 seconds for a successful alpha run, which is incredibly fast. So you're going to need to do a few things in order to ensure success, and I've got a couple tips for PC users. I don't know if I can help you with console, but for PC users, you could go to your options, and I would just get the video settings as low as possible. You you want your frame rate to be as good as it possibly can be and still be visually tolerable for you because every frame counts to get these connections when you're doing this run. So when it comes to the alpha run, I'm going to let it speak for itself and then I'll talk about a few small things afterwards. And uh, yeah, so here is my successful alpha run. So there's an alpha run done successfully with an 83 second time. That means I had two full seconds to spare. Uh, I was absolutely ecstatic when this happened because it took me only 80 tries and two days of my time to do. Totally worth it for 18,000 hexagons. Yeah, no, this is fine. I love this game so much. I can't believe I keep playing it. Do you have any more tips about the King of Swing mission? Tell us what they are in the comments below. If you found this video useful, please feel free to leave a like, comment, or subscribe to the channel. And as always, have fun out there!